The name of our memory care is Woodland Gardens, and the name of our approach is Woodland Gardens PATHS. And PATH is an acronym for Personalized Approach to Holistic Support. If you've ever been to a woodland garden, there are uh, large trees that create a, a canopy, and that canopy um, protects very fragile and delicate plants. A lot of times you'll see paths where people have meandered through a woodland garden and it's naturalized. It's not a rose garden where you've planned what colors you put each place and it's very exact. But a woodland garden, beautiful things pop up different places. So to relate that to memory care and what that means, um, you know, we wanted to create that structure and that rhythmic flow that created that canopy, but also allow that personalization where someone can find their own way and meander to where they want to go. So like the woodland gardens, letting them naturalize, if you will, you know, to what, what's most natural for them, but providing protection at the same time. Every little element of the design is important. Also, I think another important thing is that it feels like home. So it has a family room, and in the family room, it feels like your family room at home. And if you go to the dining room, it feels like a home dining room, and, and it's close to the kitchen, so they can hear and see things cooking and smell it cooking. Each apartment has 11 by 17 storyboard, and um, so it usually has the residence picture, but it has other things that mean something to them. So it's just really neat to walk down the hall and you can see different people's story quickly in a snapshot. Not only does it help cue the resident, it also helps cue the staff. And it reminds all of us, they, they have a past, they have a personality, they have preferences. When we walk by these people, they're more than their disease. In the family room, we have experiential boxes, and experiential boxes are meant to, you never know what it is exactly, but you hope you learn from someone's history what may unlock those magical moments for someone. Our life enrichment director at one point, she learned that this resident worked in an office and for years and years and years and before she retired. So she uh, purchased an antique typewriter and you know the resident loved sitting there and conducting business. So we keep those out open in the family room that people can pull out at any time. I think there's six or nine baskets and then they can be switched out based on the needs and the interest of the residents. We also have alternative therapies that we use, so uh, we utilize the music therapy, we utilize aromatherapy. One of them is pet therapy and, you know, it, it, it makes people happy. You see them smiling and laughing and you also see conversation that happens. Until you've really experienced that or seen it work for someone, you really don't understand how it can really uh, benefit someone on a deep emotional level. The music therapy that we have is just magical. Music is an effective therapeutic tool because it stimulates both hemispheres of the brain. It's specifically with individuals with dementia, um, rhythm, musical rhythm is perhaps the last thing that they will lose. They might lose verbal communication, um, other activities of daily living, those types of things, um, but rhythm will be there. And if you think about it, we all have a natural rhythm. It's our heartbeat. And so oftentimes I have someone give me back an instrument saying, well, I'm not a musician. I've never played an instrument before. And I said, well, it's okay. You can still participate in music therapy uh, and you can still be successful. Um, and I think one of my favorite things to watch is a resident who has difficulty with verbal communication, who does participate by playing an instrument, playing it in time, tapping their foot along to the beat, um, because that's something that you don't have to teach them. Um, it's a natural response, um, and that's really wonderful to be able to, um, to help facilitate as a music therapist. The things that I love the most about our care approach is consistent staffing. When residents become familiar with people and then when our, our staff become familiar with the residents and they build trust, then they're able to understand what's that one thing that makes Mrs. Smith relax or what's that one thing that she'll get involved in. Uh, where if staff are changing and coming in and out, um, you lose all of that. So consistent staffing is really key, I think. 
We have weekly care plan meetings, which often happens in skill, but not so much in assisted living. And we have daily morning meetings with all of the leadership staff. And so that daily conversation, just to touch base, you know, what happened, getting updates from, from the previous day, knowing who's coming in, who has to go out, um, coordinating with different services, um, outpatient therapy or home health or hospice. Another is our care navigator, and she is a licensed social worker, and she can help them to kind of navigate the systems. With the care navigation, I do an evaluation, and I look at five key areas. I look at what's going on physically, medically, the cognitive, functional, the environment, the legal, and the financial. And based upon those five areas, I put a plan together for the family and the individual. That coordination piece is key for families, and I know that being a family member of someone, you know, I currently am a caregiver for my grandmother, and when you have someone helping you to coordinate all of those complicated pieces um, and navigating through our complex health systems, it just make it makes the family's life better. So that when they can come, when they come, they can just really connect with their loved one, which is the most important thing. That they don't have to worry about all of the the details.